Hello everyone. Welcome to your own channel Food Tech Network. In this lecture, which is in continuation with the processing of meat and meat products series, we'll talk about slaughterhouse, its layout and components. When we begin to talk about slaughterhouse, we must know that a slaughterhouse is a place where animals, that is the livestock, are killed or slaughtered to provide food. Technically, it is also called an abater. Now, why do we need it? We need it because the production of meat and poultry products will be hygienic and wholesome in organized slaughterhouses. Illegal and unauthorized slaughter and slaughter of diseased animals will be restricted. This is very important to look after the health of the consumers. Affluent treatment plant and disposal of waste will be uh, preventing uh, the pollutants of surrounding water and air pollution also. Flies, mosquito in the area will be minimized due to disposal of slaughterhouse waste hygienically and also that waste will be treated. New opportunities in and around the plant will open up to provide employment. Export of surplus meat will earn valuable foreign exchanges. Primary production will be benefited by organized marketing and proper grading of livestock. Finally, local authorities and government will fulfill their responsibility to provide hygienic, safe and wholesome meat to the consumers. So these are the basic uh, advantages which we get by construction of slaughterhouses and using it to slaughter the animals. So when we talk about the components, a slaughterhouse should have the following components like it should have a resting place for animals before they are killed or slaughtered. Antimortem inspection area, antimortem means before killing them. Carrying out humane slaughter like they should be slaughtered in a humane manner. Dressing and washing of the carcass. Handling byproducts which are obtained after its killing inspection of meat and disposal of meat which is unfit for human consumption a laboratory for quality check segregation ward for sick or diseased animals and also should have adequate water supply let us now begin with the layout and design of a slaughterhouse a good plant layout design and construction must ensure appropriate maintenance, cleaning and disinfection of plant and building to minimize contamination. Facilities are provided for air circulation, temperature and humidity control. Effective control of flies, insects and other pests. Production of safe meat for marketing and human consumption. Stockyard, which happens to be the first component of uh, the layout in a slaughtered house, is meant for collection and marketing of livestock in a large number. It should be roofed to protect animals and staff from sunlight, rainfall and other environmental factors. As per nature, animals prefer walking up slopes rather than down the steep gradients. Therefore, it should be kept in mind while designing stockyard. We can construct it in a way that animals, when they arrive near the stockyard, they have to travel up. So by default, they will move in and uh, will reach the correct destination. Stockyard should have enough open area for vehicle turn. Usually should be located opposite to the side from where processed product meat is dispatched. In this area, animals are examined by a veterinarian before sending to the lay The ramp should directly lead to anti-mortem area with office room for veterinary inspector. This area should have water and feeding facilities. There should be separate isolation pans with watering and feeding arrangements 
for the animals suspected to be suffering from infectious diseases and the fractious animals in order to segregate them from the remaining ones. Lairage, also known as resting place for arrived animals. After passing through the reception area, the animals reach to the lairage where these take rest before being slaughtered. The rest is being given to restore their normal physiological condition. The lairage should be equipped with all facilities to feel animal comfortable and for this it should be protected from heat, cold and rain. It should be spacious enough like 2.8 meters square for large animal and 1.6 meters square for small animals. Lairage should be provided with abundant water and feed supply. This section should be constructed that the animals can be kept separately depending upon their type and class. It should have adequate facilities for anti-mortem inspection. There should also be separate isolation pans for suspected and fractious animals. There must have separate mean for different methods of slaughter like halal, chutka or Jewish slaughter. The next component is a slaughter hall. It is situated at a minimum distance of 10 meter from layerage. It has several functions and components. So the first section is drive or races. Firstly, the animals reach to holding pen and then they are driven to stunning pen through drives or races. Drive is usually a curved path with single file accommodation and stop gate. Animals are continuously being guided by a person to stunning pen. Stunning pen is the area where animals are made unconscious before killing. Its design depends on its type of stunning procedure to be followed. Now generally there are three stunning procedures. Uh, electrical procedure in which they are supplied with a current in a particular area. Chemical procedure in which uh, they, are sub they are given or subjected to a very uh, you know high carbon dioxide uh, content area so that they become unconscious and they faint even they can be given a cut in a particular vein which also makes them unconscious bleeding area immediately after stunning which is uh, done uh, by this bleeding operation by cutting a particular vein the bleeding area is the area in which just after stunning the animal has to be bled to death this area should possess a good gradient for collection of blood. When I say gradient, this is the height difference so that a slope sort of structure is created which allows you know gravity based separation or removal of blood to the collection area. The area should be so located that the blood should not be splashed on other animals being slaughtered or on the carcass being skinned. Drainage and collection of blood should be immediate and proper. The minimum diameter of the blood drain shall be 150 mm or approximately 0.15 meter. The bleeding trough for large animals should be at least 1.5 meter wide and 1.1 to 1.2 meter for small animals. It should be enclosed on both sides and shall have a smooth surface such as uh, the one made from stainless steel. We next have the carcass dressing area. So the animal which has been, uh, you know, bled to death, uh, the blood from uh, them are already removed. So the dead body remain is known as carcass. So now we need to dress it. So in this area, a number of operations are carried out, such as removal of hide, that is the skin area and skin, of course, head removal, evisceration now evisceration means removal of internal organs like intestine stomach heart lungs and all these areas splitting trimming and final wash in most cases the bones are also removed dressing of carcass should not be done on floor because it can lead to contamination adequate means for immediate disposal of hides or skins should be provided the hides and skins should never be spread on slaughter floor for inspection 
again for the same region of contamination. There should be provisions for immediate disposal of legs, horns, hooves and other waste materials. Adequate number of hand wash basins with sterilizers and hot and cold water outlets should be provided in the area. If pigs are being slaughtered, then the swine scalding tank, that is the area in which uh, the pigs are you know, put in the boiling water and dehering equipment should be separated from the rest area. The scalding tank should be equipped with overflow facilities. For a slaughterhouse with higher slaughter rate, that is 25 or more cattle per hour or 150 or more swine per hour, a moving top evisceration table should be provided with cold water sprays to remove blood and extraneous material continuously. There should be other facilities such as racks or trays or equivalent means to maintain the identity of the organs and parts detained for veterinary diagnosis. We next have inspection area. So before evisceration or the removal of internal organs, the carcass has to be examined carefully for any pathological lesions. Once the carcass is ready for sending to the next section, all its internal organs and the whole eviscerated carcass are re-examined carefully. Then it is decided whether the carcass has to be sent to chilling section or condemned meat room or detention room. Adequate facilities and space should be there for inspection of the viscera. Hand washing, equipment sterilization, flower washing and facilities for separation and disposal of condemned meat should be provided in this area. Next is carcass washing area. A separately sloped drain area should be provided for washing of the approved carcass with a jet of water. This area should be well curved. This is followed by cold storage. If the meat is to be consumed immediately after dressing, in hot condition, the carcass has to be sent immediately for sale and cooking. Otherwise, in all other cases, carcass should be chilled soon after the post-mortem inspection. The chilling temperature for carcass should not exceed 7 degrees Celsius, while for offal, it should not be below 4 degrees Celsius. Offal is the term used for internal organs. Chilling is practiced to set up the meat firmly and check any microbial growth. All blast freezers and holding freezers should be capable of maintaining temperature of minus 25 degrees Celsius or lower and minus 18 degrees Celsius or lower respectively. <clears throat> there should be provision for measuring relative humidity and temperature as these parameters control the microbial and other uh, parameter based shelf life of the product. Next we have cutting and deboning room. Once the carcass is firmly set in chilling room, deboning that is separation of meat from the bones becomes easier and cut into pieces. The operation is performed in controlled temperature that is 10 to 12 degrees Celsius area by skilled and efficient worker. An adequate number of knife and sanitizers should be provided at strategic locations. This is followed by packaging and dispatch section. Adjacent to cutting and deboning room, there is packaging room where the meat chunks are packaged and after freezing, they are kept in the frozen condition that is minus 40 degrees Celsius before dispatch. The dispatch area should be adequate in space and shall allow for orderly and efficient loading of meat into transport vehicle. We next have condemned meat room. It is directly connected with the inspection area. It should have an adequate space, refrigeration and drainage along with supply of durable and lockable containers and weighing facilities are essential in order to arrange for sorting and holding animal materials which are unfit for human consumption prior to dispatch. 
quality control laboratory is also you know fitted in this layout this is meant for detailed examination of carcass and their respective viscera microbiological tests are conducted here this area should be well equipped for detailed examination of the carcass and organs because the final decision of acceptance or rejection of the meat and the offals dependent the layout is also fitted with quality control laboratory this is meant for detailed examination of carcass and their respective viscera microbiological tests are conducted here this area should be well equipped for detailed examination of the carcass and organs because the final decision of acceptance or rejection of the meat and the offals depends on the report of quality control laboratory this area should be directly connected with the slaughter hall now once we are done with all the components discussion let us see how should the premises of a slaughter house or a beater be it is required to be approved and registered by local authorities the plans include site plan floor plan and plumbing plan the site plan must show complete premises and the location in relation to the roads railways waterways adjoining properties and their function catch basin water and sewage lines storage tanks etc the floor plan must explain layout of walls doorways windows partitions rail system equipment benches platforms toilets conveyors staircases hot and cold water connections ventilations fans work positions of operatives position of drainage gutters and flower gradients the plan building floor wall ceiling partition door and all other parts of the structures shall be of such material construction and finish that they can be readily and thoroughly cleaned in case of roofing it provides framework of the roof of wood or steel the roof may be made of corrugated aluminum asbestos or iron galvanized steel plates for the bottom of the door are also used on the outside for protection against rodents for construction material the general principle regarding the choice of materials for constructing store uh, slaughter house is that the materials must be durable and be able to resist deterioration or destruction from external influences such as the weather the material must be water and blood resistant and not stained by fat the use of local materials for building a beater to minimize the construction cost is promoted for floor it should be impervious non absorbent non slippery and should have suitable gradient for drainages to make the non slippery surface aluminum oxide is incorporated interior walls the walls required to be smooth flat and material used must be non toxic and non absorbent durable light colored wall sheets are often used in the form of plastic laminates aluminum polished asbestos stainless steel or polyvinyl chloride faced metal free from rust ceilings it should be of good height smooth and flat cement plastered water resistant and impervious to minimize condensation and should be easy to clean window seal it should be it should slope at 45 degree to promote sanitation windows sills should be 1200 mm above the floor level there should be mechanical venting in roof structure doorways and doors it should be at least 2.5 m high 1.5 m wide and made up of rust resistant material doorways and doors they should be at least 2.5 m high 1.5 m wide and made up of rust resistant metal 
like stainless steel. For a pest control, the ingress of rats, mice and insects can lead to serious problems as they are carrier of a number of zoonotic diseases. Insect and rodents screen should be provided in a better. There should be air curtain at reception, dispatch, landing and offloading platform. Anti room. There should be an anti room at main entrance where the air curtain exists. For drainage, there should be an efficient drainage system. As a general rule, one drainage inlet should be provided for each 37 meter square of flower space and a slope of 20 mm per meter to drainage inlet should be there for usual condition proper flow of the effluent. Each floor drain should be equipped with a deep seal trap and drainage line should be properly vented to the outside air. Drainage line for toilet urinal should be separate and drainage systems should discharge into a septic tank. Light and ventilation. A beta should be constructed in such a way that adequate natural light and ventilation is available. For natural light, windows should face to north with provision for glass. Uncolored glass may be used in skylights and windows. Artificial light and ventilation should be provided alternatively by mechanical means using bulbs and other such things. The intensities of light are usually taken at level of 0.9 meter from the floor except in inspection areas where the height is 1.5 meter. Ventilation is necessary to overcome excess heat, steam, condensation, odor, dust accumulation, etc. There should be sufficient and suitable means for ventilation to the outside air. Water supply An abater should be provided with sufficient, safe, portable and constant supply of fresh chlorinated water with adequate pressure. The water distribution plant may be located at the center. A constant supply of clean hot water should be available for frequent sterilizing of equipment. Suitable facilities should be there for washing of hands and floors. For fire control, non-portable water should be provided in completely separate lines. Apart from this, an effluent treatment plant should also be given where to various aerobic and anaerobic reactions the effluent can be treated and uh, be made suitable for sending it to the nearby water bodies or for other such treatments. And if we talk about the volume of wastewater, then 80 to 85 percent of the water intake is converted into effluent. And it can contain a number of things like blood, bits of meat, fat, paunch content, urine, and duct. So each of, each of this is high in organic matter. That's why they need to be treated in a very well condition. So this was all about the structure and layout of a slaughterhouse, its various components. I hope you understood them well. Still, if you have any doubt, you can jot them down in the comment section. I'll be more than happy to comment. Thank you.